Hello again. I think it's time to show you how the mouse works. This is the end result. This is under with all, with all the cables. We've got a PlayStation 2 controller in here, which goes for the rotation of the 3D model. We've got a zoom in and out. Five buttons, a grid, and a wrist rest. And that's it. The cable is magnetic. It needs a program to work. And we've got some rotation. And this is how I use it. I have uh, the S for the shortcuts. ESC, uh, Ctrl and Shift, always useful. And X for the uh, sketches, for the construction lines. I've got the numpad. This is mostly what I use when designing. And yeah. That's it. I just woke up from a food coma. Too much pasta. The first part of the video was probably made five months ago. And it was in Italian, so I'm going to redo it again. Yeah boy, yeah boy. I wrote a checklist for the Galaxy Mouse version 2. Things I need to remove and things I need to improve. Let's go to the joystick. It needs to be less wobbly. Uh, the cables uh, are obstructing the movement. Uh, and it needs to be more compact. I'd like to add more buttons uh, on the joystick itself. More degrees of freedom. Cables. It needs to have an easier installation. On the main body, a better Arduino position. Definitely. Some software improvements. Yeah. Not bad, not bad, not bad. I searched online for help or inspiration and I found two videos. Amaville and Space Rat. Uh, I started with the Amaville because it, it looked the prettiest. And the software was actually pretty cool. I downloaded the project. I looked at the videos, I got demoralized, because it's actually pretty nice. He almost made everything I needed for the Galaxy Mouse version 2. Let's rant about the assembly. What were the 6 degrees of freedom called? The mechanism for uh, back, forward, uh, left and right is visually uh, really appealing. In terms, of, in terms of practicality, it sucks. Even building it, it sucks. It uses really tiny bolts. It uses glue, which I don't like. It just sucks. That's it. It sucks. I don't like it. Yeah, the springs. Fuck the springs. I will need to use them, but not in this way. So, when I realized the assembly is really bad, I tried to, uh, to understand the PCB. What's the next logical step? Research for the best PCB designer. Altium designer. Okay. All right, once I legally downloaded Altium, I looked at the PCBs, I downloaded the file, the files. I printed the files. All of them. I tried to read them, not a chance. I realized I don't understand shit. I thought the problem was just uh, I needed some more time. So I did this. I hung 
all of the drawings on the wall. <coughs> Once I mostly understood uh, the electrical uh, drawings, I thought to myself, let's buy the PCBs. I've got the entire files. I don't know how to use them. Let's go to the PCB's websites where we can buy it. We've got PCBWay and uh, JLPCB. I upload the file. Oh, nice. Two dollars. Pretty cheap. How many pieces? Five. I understand half of these options. So that's fine. PCB thickness. Uh, yeah, cool. And, oh, what's this? PCB assembly. Okay. Top side or bottom side? I, I don't fucking know. What the fuck is this? Bore cleaning? Bake components? Let's add another one. Probably uh, just a fluke. Add bomb file? CPL file? Well, I don't understand anything about PCBs. Great. So, what's the best logical next step? Let's learn about the PCBs. So I go on the most reliable source of information, YouTube, and I search for PCB tutorial. Top 15 mistakes people make when designing prototype PCBs. Oh, nice. There are so many things I did not understand in this video. This is all of them. Oh, one honorable mention. One, on one honorable mention. One, one honorable mention. Thank you, Electroboom, for teaching me what say. Bipolar transistor, BJT. But at least I know what it is. I think I know. Probably 40%. So this was the Amaville. Let's go with the space rod. The first assembly, you take a magnet, put it near the sensor, and uh, ooh, six degrees of freedom. While assembling it, I realized there is something wrong with it. The magnets are not moving differently than the sensor. They are always in the same position. Do you know what the magnets are used in this, in this mouse? To make the button center itself. It's not 6 degrees of freedom. The code is fake. So it's all bad. It's, it's just scrapped. It's not even a magnetometer. After a few days, I've got three more candidates. The Osem, the Aptic from IOSIS, and the Space Mouse from Salim. So, let me remember. What was the problem of the Osem mouse? Uh, I don't remember. Was it the PCB? That I needed to buy a PCB? Yeah, probably. Okay, so uh, I just opted for a more easily available one. And you know why? Because fuck buying PCB. How do they fucking work? The, the electronics on it, uh, uh, the Gerber files, uh, fuck them. But I don't understand them. Fuck them. So the, uh, the next one was the haptic from IOSIS. Uh, it's actually pretty cool. But what's the problem? It's not even in my range of knowledge uh, on how to make it, and even though I really like it. So we've come with the, the one I'm going now from Salem. Why, you might ask? It has a lot of views. It has actually six degrees of freedom. It uses magnets. It has one big problem. It's not usable for Fusion 360. It's just... Nice to the eye. Do you want to know why in his video just goes uh, one direction at a time? The double center button press. It goes to the right, waits, goes up. Because if you do right and left, it just centers the model. I have nothing against him. I just think that his base mouse doesn't work. I'll make it work. I think that's it. Well, ciao. I tried some things for the joystick, some movement improvements. Since I'm starting to get inspired by Salim, 
this is the first prototype from Salim. It works. It has some problems. It's too noisy. Uh, it's not perfectly aligned. So the moment I shift it uh, and bounce it back, uh, it doesn't go perfectly at the same position every time. But still, it's a start. Today it happened that I thought, uh, why do I need to use springs? Wasn't one of the requirements to reduce the hardware needed. So I tried some different designs. This one was the first. And uh, the next ones. The idea was to have the rotation on the external one. And the, the rotation on the external fence. The inverse rotation on the internal fence. And this movement as well. None of them worked. Too rigid. PLA, by the way. Later in the day, I found a paper. I decoupled the 6 degrees of freedom compliant parallel mechanism with, op with optimized dynamic characteristics, char characteristics using cellular structure. It's pretty interesting. Uh, it's really complex. This is the result. works. It's actually 6 degrees of freedom. I can really improve on this design with external magnets to keep it from going over, over the elasticity of the material, so it never goes on the plasticity side. It's not perfect since it's PLA, but I can make it perfect with magnets. Nice. The first prototype to reach it. And that's it. This is a pretty good improvement.